ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ايها المسلمون indeed from the great sacred rights and the beauties of our islam the legislation of the zakat the legislation of the obligatory charity that is to be performed by those who are considered wealthy and given to those who are needy and those who are poor and those who deserve this wealth a great legislation clarifying the beauty and the perfection of the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the people of knowledge have clarified as zakat linguistically in the arabic language it means at taharatu wal baraka wan nama'u wa ziyada The meaning of the word zakat linguistically in the Arabic language is purification, purification and blessing and uh, flourishment and to thrive and to increase in goodness. And this is the issue of a zakat that it indeed is a means of purification and it is a means to have blessing and much goodness and for the goodness to flourish and to grow. And for the goodness to flourish and to grow. The people of Nara they have mentioned as zakat shar'iyah thalathatu anwa that the legislative zakat is three different types zakatun nafs wa zakatul mal wa zakatul badan there is the zakat that is for the soul and there is the zakat that is for the wealth and there is the zakat that is for the body the zakat that is for the body beginning first and foremost zakatun nafs the zakat that is performed on the soul and the means of purification and cultivation of the soul and this is the aim and the goal of the legislation and likewise the purpose of the other aspects of a zakat and the sacred rites of al-islam to purify the soul to purify the soul from shirk and from kufr and from nifaq from all types of paganism and polytheism from every aspect purifying the soul from disbelief from every aspect purifying the soul from hypocrisy and all of its branches in every aspect purifying the creed from everything that is contrary to the reality of the tawhid and making the religion purely and sincerely for Allah purifying the actions of worship purifying the actions of worship from every custom and culture that is contrary to that which is revealed to prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam purifying the actions of worship and the contracts from innovation and newly invented affairs in the religion purification of the tongue and the heart and uh, the eyes and the ears and the mind and the body and the soul this is the wisdom from uh, the legislation of zakat and likewise the law of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that the souls can be purified and upright and they can be cultivated and good upon piety upon piety and this is the means that would determine the success or the failure of an individual in this life allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has mentioned in his book qad aflaha man zakaha وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَاهَا Indeed, the one who purifies his soul, he will be successful. And indeed, the one who corrupts his soul, he will be a failure and he will lose. The soul that must be purified 
from the false ideologies and misunderstandings and creed and belief. The soul that must be purified from the actions of worship that are contrary to the law of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam must be purified from the desire and from the impermissible lusts that are not allowed purified from the actions of disobedience and actions that are considered sin and transgression, purified from the lowly and the foul manners and speech and behavior that is not befitting for a believer. The soul that must be purified and in this manner, one he can have success and be safe from loss and from failure in this life and in the hereafter. In this life and in the hereafter. Purity of the soul is in the hand of Allah. And it is a favor from Allah and a bounty and blessing from Allah. And it only can be given and provided from Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, He mentioned in His book, وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ مَزَكَ مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ أَبَدًا Had it not been for the grace of Allah and His mercy upon you, not one of you would have ever been rectified, never been purified, never been guided to the proper belief and the proper creed, never been guided to perform the actions of worship and to comply to the commandments and avoid the prohibitions. It's a favor from Allah. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يُزَكِي مَنْ يَشَاءَ But rather it is Allah, He purifies whom He wills. Meaning He guides to the truth and grants whom He wills success to follow of that and to abide by that and to live by that and to die by that. It's a favor from Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he knew this and this is what he taught us. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu wa barakatuhu alayhi. The Messenger of Allah, he would call on Allah and beg him to provide his soul with piety and to guide him and to purify his soul. And from that is what is narrated in Sahih Muslim. From the hadith of Zayd ibn Arqam radiallahu anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his supplication when he would call on Allah, and he would beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would say, Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha, wa zakiha anta khayru man zakaha. He would say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, begging Allah and calling on him, Oh Allah, give my soul its piety and purify it. Indeed, you are the best of those who can purify it, and you are its Lord and its master. And you are its Lord and its master. So therefore the purification of the soul is the means of success in this life and the safety from failure in this life and loss in the hereafter. And it can only be given by Allah. So a believer, he will realize this and he will beg Allah to purify his soul and the soul of his family members and his loved ones. And he will strive upon that way and he will work. And he will strive upon that way and he will work. But likewise, the second type of zakat, zakat mal the zakat that is an obligation upon the wealth. The zakat that is an obligation upon the wealth. And this is the third pillar from the pillars of Al-Islam, indicating the greatness of this affair. And it's something major and it is not something minor. And it's something great and it is not something small. And it's something that is very beneficial for the individual and for the wealth and the property. And likewise for the, the poor and the needy as well as the society. It's a pillar from the pillars of Al-Islam. It has been connected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim from the famous narration of Abdullah ibn Umar. رضي الله عنهما that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said بُنِيَ الْإِسْلَامُ وَلَا خَمْس that our Islam is based upon five and from them he mentioned وَإِتَاءِ الزَّكَاتِ and performing and performing the zakat the zakat is an obligation upon those who are wealthy it's an obligation upon those who their wealth has reached the legislative level and status an obligation that they must perform a right to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise a right to those who deserve the zakat from the poor and from the needy likewise to clarify the great status and the rank of this great pillar the pillar of as-salat the pillar of as-zakat is that it is uh, mentioned many times in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coupled along with the salat. And it is known that the status of the salat is the greatest. It's the greatest status in Al-Islam after the shahadatain. And the greatest actions of the believers after testifying that there's nothing worthy of worship except for Allah. And that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to establish the salat. Is to establish the salat. And many times in the book of Allah, whenever the zakat is mentioned, it is mentioned coupled along. It is mentioned along coupled with the mention of, of a salah, a clarification of, of the greatness of this affair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentioned in His book, وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاتِ وَرْكَعُوا مَا الرَّاكِعِينَ And establish the prayer and perform the zakat and bow down with those who bow down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنَا وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentioned and said good and noble words to the people and establish the prayer and perform the zakat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentioned, وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاتَ وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ تَجِدُوهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ تَجِدُوهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ and establish the prayer and perform the zakat and whatever you send forth and do from goodness for your own souls, you will find it with Allah.
you will find it with Allah, multiplied in reward. Multiplied in reward from Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the affair of the zakat is a major affair. And an obligation to learn and to know that upon those who are wealthy and those who save money and those who have business and those who have farm and cattle and the likes like this. It's an obligation and from establishing the deen and from establishing Islam in the hearts and in the homes and in the lands and in the society. And there are great wisdoms and great benefits from the establishment and the legislation of a zakat. And from that is the purification and the cultivation of the soul and the wealth of the individual who is performing the zakat. And the one who performs the zakat is a means of purifying his soul, purifying his heart and purifying his soul and cleansing it from the love of this life and the preference of this worldly life. And likewise, purifying his soul from greed and stinginess, as well as purifying his soul from showing preference to the desires of the soul and the lust of the soul and cultivating the soul upon the remembrance of Allah and the fear of Allah. Cultivating the soul upon showing preference to the command of Allah and responding to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by performing the zakat, giving away the wealth that one loves for the sake of Allah and out of fear of Allah and hoping for the reward of Allah. It means a purification for the soul of that individual by the permission of Allah azza wa jal. But likewise, it means a purification for his wealth. Because the wealth many times, especially in these days, especially in these lands, the wealth is, is becoming mixed up. And sometimes the wealth it will be mixed with filth and that which is foul. And by performing this zakat on that, it's a means of purifying the wealth by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has been narrated by Al-Tabarani and likewise at Hakim from the Hadith of Jabir that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man adda zakat maadihi faqad dhahab anhu sharru. That whoever performed the right of zakat on his wealth, then indeed the evil of that wealth has gone away. Then indeed the evil of that wealth has gone away. So it's a means to purify the wealth. And it means for the wealth to flourish and to grow. And for a person to have the blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal in his finances and in his wealth. To have the blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal in his finances and his wealth. It has been connected by Imam Muslim from the Hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَا نَقَصَتْ صَدَقَةُ مِنْ مَالِ the, 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 the charity will never decrease the wealth. The charity, especially the obligatory charity of the zakat, it will never decrease the wealth. Although the person he will give from his wealth, it will, be, it will be a means to gain the blessing of Allah and the favor of Allah. And Allah, He will multiply that wealth for him and He will cause his wealth to grow and to flourish. And likewise, He will put blessing and goodness in that wealth. And even if a person, he had a small amount of wealth, but he had the blessing of Allah, then his wealth will carry him and be a benefit for him and his family. And be a benefit for him and his family. Contrary to those who have lots of wealth, but their wealth does not have the blessing of Allah, then his wealth will be a means to earn the anger of Allah. And it will be a means for him to fall into disobedience and misguidance. And it will not be a benefit for him. And he will have lots of wealth and he will feel like he's poor and destitute. What do you billah? But likewise, the zakat and the law and the legislation of this great affair, the obligatory charity is a means to purify the heart and the soul of those who are in poverty and those who are in need. Because whenever a person is needy, and whenever a person is impoverished and poor, and he looks at the wealthy, and they show no care and concern for him, and they do not look out for him or take care of him while they have more wealth than they need, and they are in need and they are in poverty themselves, then many times enmity and jealousy will come in their hearts, and hatred or rancor will grow in their hearts, and they'll have animosity towards those who are wealthy. But by the legislation of zakat and the obligation of those who are wealthy to care for those who are needy and to look out for them and to have concern for them and to give to them from their wealth. This is the means to cultivate love in the hearts of, the, of those who are poor and to cultivate true brotherhood and to remember that uh, the Muslims, they are one ummah and that they cooperate together and they help one another and those who are in a good state, they help those who are in need. So therefore the needy and the poor, they will realize this. Instead of having hatred for their brothers who are wealthy, they will have love and respect and honor for them. They'll have love and respect and honor for them. Likewise, from the beauty of Azakant, is that's a means of purification for the society in general. A means of purification for the communities and the societies from the major crimes. From the major crimes like robbery and stealing and the likes like this. Whenever the poor, they're looked after and they're cared for and they're given the wealth that they need to cover their needs. Then they will not turn to robbery or to theft 
or to stealing or to cheating and lying and taking debts and falling into debt even more and more and so on and so forth, bringing much ills and evils to the society. So the issue of this zakat is a means of purification for the souls, the means of purification for the wealth, the means of purification for the society. And this is from the beauty about Islam. A believer, he must show concern for this affair and learn this law and abide by it, inwardly and outwardly and public and in private. The third type of zakat, the people of knowledge, they have clarified zakat al bedin the zakat that is for the body. And it's also known as zakat al-fitr. Zakat al-fitr, which is a, an obligatory charity that must be paid at the end of Ramadan. At the end of Ramadan, before the establishment of, of the prayer of Eid. And it's called uh, zakat al bedin the zakat that is for the body, because whoever has those under his care on the night of Eid, he will look at those bodies and he will count them and he will perform zakat on each one of them based upon their bodies, not upon their wealth or not upon any other aspect. Are their bodies present and under his care? If so, it's an obligation to pay zakat on behalf of them. The zakat that is called zakat al-fitr and uh, the zakat that is performed in a specific manner, in a specific time and is only accepted from the types of food items that are well known. And it has been collected by Abi Dawood from the hadith of Ibn Abbas and radiallahu anhu that he said, فرض رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم زكاة الفطر طهرة للصائم من اللغو والرفث وطعمة للمساكين الحديث that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he made zakat al-fitr an obligation as a means of purification for the fasting person from the foul and lowly manners and behavior from his speech and his actions while he's fasting and likewise as a means of feeding the poor. So this is the zakat that is intended in the legislation and it's an obligation to be able to identify them. And some people because of lack of concern and ignorance they have mixed these affairs. And some of them have considered that they have been performing the zakat which is a pillar of Al-Islam every Ramadan by performing zakat al-fitr. And they have completely neglected the zakat that is on their wealth. And others they are performing the zakat on their wealth and likewise they are performing the zakat even on the, the zakat al-fitr, but with regards to their souls, their souls are tainted and filthy with the love of this life and preference of this worldly life and disobedience. And their souls are tainted with the love of innovations and customs and cultures. So therefore it's an obligation to purify the soul and to purify the wealth. And they go hand in hand whenever they're done sincerely for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد with regards to zakat al-mal with regards to the zakat on the wealth this is a law and a legislation that is prescribed that was legislated and decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it was clarified in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it's an action of worship it must be performed for the sake of Allah hoping for His reward, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and hoping for His pleasure, tabaraka wa ta'ala, not for any worldly gain whatsoever. And likewise, it must be performed according to the law and the legal ways of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And those who, it's an obligation for them to perform this account, they're a specific category of people. And those who, it's a, an, it's, and those who are allowed to receive this account, it's a specific category of people. The wealth that zakat will be upon is a specific category of wealth. And the amount that that wealth must reach is a specific amount. The amount that is given is a specific amount. The amount that is given is a specific amount. All of these affairs are clarified in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there are conditions and there are requirements. And there are details that must be learned for those who have wealth and those who have property and those who have business and those who save and those who have cattle and the likes like this and farmland, so on and so forth. It's incumbent for them to learn these affairs so they can perform the zakat properly. Some people, they have no concern for the zakat and they have not performed that and they are negligent and there's a great threat with regards to this. A threat with regards to this in the hereafter that that property that they hoarded will be a means to punish them and to torture them and harm them on the day of judgment. They'll be punished by that wealth. 
They'll be punished by that wealth. And likewise, those who are negligent with regards to that, and they perform the zakat upon ignorance, and they give it to those who do not deserve it, or they give the wrong amount, or they do not perform it properly, do not count their wealth properly, they do not abide by the law, likewise, they will not be accepted. Until it's for the sake of Allah and according to the sunnah of the Prophet So it's very important to have knowledge of this affair. A believer should be shy in general to worship Allah upon ignorance. To know that Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth and the sustainer and the provider of all things. And He has given everything a shape and its form and He is alive and He never dies. He's powerful and strong and He's never weak. He feeds and He's not fed. He does not get thirsty or tired or sleepy. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who is providing for us our very life and our safety and security and all of the good that we have. And He's worthy of worship. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should be shy to worship Him and fulfill the obligations that are upon us in a manner of ignorance or according to customs and desires without any evidence from the Quran or from the Sunnah. Rather, one who will hope to draw near to Allah in a manner that will be accepted, in a manner that's pleasing to Him. And this is from the wisdom of the sending of the prophets and the messengers and the seal of the revelation and the coming of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to clarify the pathway that leads to Allah azza wa jal. To clarify the pathway that leads to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to warn from the, the pathways that lead to His anger. So to perform the obligations upon clarity, upon insight, upon evidence, upon proof, upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon the way of As-Salif al-Salih, the way of Abu Bakr and Umar, and Uthman and Ali radiyallahu anhum and those after them, who are upon the righteous and the good and pleasing way, who are upon the righteous and the good and pleasing way, to have care and concern for this is of the utmost importance. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in an authentic narration, Ra'su al-Amri al-Islam, the head of the affair. Is that Islam? This is what is important and this is what takes precedence. Establishing Islam in your life. Establishing Islam in your home. Establishing Islam whenever you're moving and when you're on the go and whenever you're sitting and whenever you're relaxing and wherever you may be in your masjid or in your market or in your job or in your occupation. Whenever you're alone, whenever you're in private, whenever you're in public with the believers and the non-believers. The motto and the slogan of a believer, Ratsul Amri al-Islam. The head of the affair is that Islam. Establish it in your life, you will have good. Establish it in your homes, you will have good and blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no Islam except with the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there is no sunnah except by way of the companions radiallahu anhum. They are the narrators and those who carried this deen to us. May Allah be pleased with them. اللهم اكفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا عذاب النار وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم